don't need a high-end designer or a lot of money to get a luxe look. Be your own interior designer. This is Affordable Interior Design, the podcast. Here's your host, Betsy Hellman. If you're watching along on YouTube, you're wondering, what is happening over there? Has Betsy given up? Has she just uh, become so tired and overwhelmed in her third trimester that she's just not trying anymore? And the answer is yes and no. The good news is that I am almost about to have this baby and I'm feeling really good. So that's good because it hasn't been too hot. I worried this is my first summer pregnancy. I was so concerned that I'd feel like a beached whale, and then it'd just be such a struggle to even walk out of the house. And it's been chilly. I'm wearing a sweater today. Uh, There haven't been too many awesome beach days. There's been so much rain. I've been very comfortable. And I've been really enjoying the summer pregnancy because there's so many fruits and vegetables, and I've just been craving all this healthy stuff. I mean, last night I ate half a watermelon. (laughs) and several handfuls of cherries for dessert. That was just dessert, people. Uh, So anyway, it's not that, even though the sleep is not going well. But um, what it is, is that, first of all, I'm leaving on vacation tomorrow. So I'm trying to get everything done in advance. And I've given myself, you know, poor time estimations for all these different things. And then also, I went to a writer's write-in today, write-in, where you and a bunch of other writers are in this room and you spend three hours writing. And I got there and I was very excited. It was my first time doing something like this, but you know, I'm writing that interior design book and I want to get the first four chapters out as well as my query letter so that after I have the baby, I can be shopping this thing around to different agents. So very exciting, but that's a lot to do in a short amount of time. So I really need to finish chapter one this week and I thought the write-in would be just the place to do it. I show up and the whole room smells like really bad chemicals. Down the hall, they're peeling up this carpet and laying new carpet and it smells like glue and whatever. So I ask if they could shut the door. Luckily, they do. But by that time, I'm not even like realizing Have I gotten used to the smell? Am I not smelling it anymore? I'm just worried, right? And so I'm a little bit distracted. And then we're all sitting at these tables and the guy next to me is rocking back and forth. (laughs) I mean, I guess he's soothing himself while he writes or something, but it's very distracting. And then the woman on the other side of me has scissors and she's got all of her pages printed out and is like cutting pieces out so that it looks almost like, I don't know, like some kind of serial killer's manifesto where just holes are in these eight and a half by 11 pages. And so between the clink of her scissors and him in my periphery rocking back and forth, I'm highly distracted. I'm worried that I'm poisoning my baby. I'm in our local library. I mean, I don't really need help or to be surrounded by other people to get this writing done. I've already finished five and six. So I just pack up my stuff and go downstairs and sit on the first floor of the library where there's no fumes and where I can choose a table in seclusion. And I wrote 2,000 words. I've finished chapter one. And it's such a slog because the first, you know, I was already three quarters of the way done, but just getting back into it and going back into my journals is just, uh, well, it's tough because I have this outline of what I want to write and it's all based on stuff that's actually happened to me in my diaries. And this first chapter is the story about revenge, where if you've listened to this podcast, you've heard it, but I go into much more depth about the story, about how I met the guy, about where I was living at the time, what I was doing for work to make money, all these different sort of complex New York scenarios and weaving them together. And then, of course, revisiting the worst trauma of my career, all while digging it up in my diary and the things you think you're going to find, you don't find. Like, why didn't I write about that? But then I spent so much time writing about this and blah, blah, blah. Well, anyway, 
I feel very successful. But instead of writing from one to four as the write-in was scheduled, I wrote from one to 7.30. Not writing the whole time because I was distracted and moved my stuff and flagged my journals and all that. But uh, ultimately, that's how long it took. So I'm hitting these airwaves rather late. And I apologize for that because, uh, you know, life happens. And then I'm going to hop off the airwaves and go into my house and pack my swimsuit and sundresses and hope that there's better weather on the Cape than there happens to be right here in Connecticut where it's rainy and gray and cold. All right. Well, there we go, guys. But um, that's all to say that I'm really excited about not only the baby, um, which brings with it excitement, nerves, anxiety, et cetera, but also this new creative baby, this book. And I feel like I've been channeling a lot of the creative energy of actually creating a person to creating this thing that I'm really excited about. And so far, the gestational periods have been pretty similar. I think I started the book in March, something like that. Um, And the baby started gestating in January. So as soon as I stopped feeling sick as a dog, I started writing this book. There we go. Uh, Anyway, I hope that it will be in print soon so that you guys can all read it because I think it will be entertaining. And I talk a lot about my interior design choices and how not only have I evolved as a person, but also as an interior designer and sort of the silly, horrible design decisions I've made over my career. And um, it's fun to revisit some of that. All right. Let's get in the mailbag and answer your questions. So Renee is writing from Atlanta and she says, Hi, Betsy. How might a regular person on a budget approach a kitchen remodel? My cabinets have reached the don't pull the drawer out or I'll fall on your foot stage. My sister doesn't love her double wall ovens and now they've both quit working. We are rethinking out of necessity, not a grand wish for a dream designer kitchen. Both of us have DIY handy husbands. Does your firm help with layout? We can't reach the sink if the dishwasher is open and the fridge and the oven doors hit each other. What order do you choose floors, cabinets, counters, and tables? How do we make sure it doesn't look outdated in five years? Do you have go-to finishes, white or gray? All right, so here is some advice based on your very good questions. And Renee, you know I always love getting your questions. First thing is you should go to a kitchen designer or kitchen planner. And you're saying, Betsy, we're on a budget. We're DIY. We don't have enough funds for something like that. And the answer is you do. So even Ikea has kitchen planners and designers. Uh, You could do Ikea. You could do Home Depot. And they have different levels where you can install it yourself or you can pay for their installers. But oftentimes those measuring services and planning services are absolutely free or they deduct the cost of the measuring service from the cost of the cabinets when you decide to move forward. Now, the reason that I recommend that versus having somebody at my firm plan it out is because all these different cabinet lines are different. The offerings that they have from corner cabinets to the different accessories and pullouts and dimensions, they're quite specific to that company. So that company has software based on what they offer. If you're to go to just an interior designer, they're going to give you a generic plan. And then maybe the items that you actually find at the kitchen cabinet place you choose won't work. So in order to get a plan that you know you can move forward with, it's best to just start at a store that you know you can afford. Uh, Say you were going with Ikea. Well, you'd have them map it out for you, and then they can give you different scenarios and different price points based on different cabinet finishes, right? So when I'm designing a kitchen, what I would do is first I would start with some inspiration photos, no matter what my budget was of kitchens that I was really excited about, that I liked, that I could see having some similarities to either my kitchen's layout or to sort of a path that I could afford in terms of the finishes, right? 
So once I created that Pinterest board of looks that I like, I would go to one of those vendors I mentioned, whether it's, you know, Lowe's, Home Depot, or Ikea, and I would work with one of their designers there and show them what I'm thinking and have them come do custom measurements and a layout for me. Then I would decide to move forward. And what you'd want to do is start with the cabinet bases first and then the doors. So cabinet bases and doors because it's going to be quite a limited selection depending on where you're going. Certainly if you're at the IKEA price point, it's going to be quite limited. Then what I would do next is I would choose the countertops. Now you can oftentimes get the countertops at the cabinet company that's making the kitchen cabinets. But in the case that you want something more upscale or that you just want something different, there are some like stone source places. I like to go and actually look at my slab. Uh, depending on how large your kitchen is, you can um, go to these like overstock type places uh, that have excess from builders and you can get great deals on pieces there. Uh, but anyway, then you would go for the countertop. What I would choose next is the flooring. So deciding what type of tile works well, pulls out any veining from the countertop, coordinates well with the cabinets. So I would do the flooring next. Ooh, excuse me. Ooh, little sneeze. And then... I would go for that backsplash. So that's kind of the order in which I would do things. In terms of avoiding a dated look, you know, it's hard to know what's going to be dated in the future, but certainly one thing that's completely out right now are white on white on white kitchens. And I don't want to say I told you so, but guys, I told you so. I hated those from the start. Also, I think gray cabinets are sort of done having a moment. I think gray in general is somewhat done having a moment and looking at the pictures you've sent of your home, I think either a gray beige or a beige works better anyway for things like flooring, the countertops, etc. And then you do a fun backsplash. Now your kitchen is open to a dining area and potentially like a small seating area. And so I would choose a backsplash that pulls a color from those areas to kind of bring something bright and lively, tie the two spaces together, and just uh, add some personality to the kitchen. So all of that can be done on a very low budget, just depending on which initial vendor you go with, because of course the cabinets and the countertops are going to be your biggest expense. Let me see what else I could say. I think in a small galley kitchen like this, I would avoid doing two-tone cabinets, meaning one color on the bottom and one color on the top. I think that works much better in larger kitchens where it would look almost overwhelming to have the tops and bottoms be the same color. What else am I thinking? That's all in terms of trends that I think you should avoid. I think, um, yeah, you can always, once you've created a schematic with your tile, with your countertops, with your cabinets, write in again, Renee. Uh, don't be bashful. I know you're not. So you can write in again with, say, your mood board or your Pinterest board and let me see what you've selected and I can weigh in before you install it. Just make sure that you do that before mid-September when I leave for my maternity leave. Very exciting. All right, let me get to my next question today. The next question comes all the way from Naples, Florida from Kelly. Kelly writes, hi, Betsy. Thank you for your podcast and congratulations. Wishing you the best with the last trimester of your pregnancy and with your maternity leave. I am struggling with my condo. My style words are island fun. I like bright and bold with traditional accents. I did not start with an inspiration piece. Oops. And as a result, the living room looks disjointed. I'm slowly moving out of the hand-me-down phase and it is a work in progress. What do you suggest to help pull this space together? I think large art above the couch would help, as would a rug but I've tried several options and I don't want to keep making expensive mistakes. 
I can handle a Betsy Smackdown. I'm looking forward to your suggestions. All right, well, let's go through these pictures together. I'm going to explain them for those of you who are driving, doing dishes, making dinner, and aren't on YouTube watching so that you could see these pictures yourself. So we do have a whole lot of look in here, Kelly. There is no question about that. So you have a big sort of um, muted Kelly Green sectional. Uh, in front of the sectional, you have a small, almost too small, round upholstered ottoman that's tufted and gray. Those two things are resting on a sisal rug that appears to have a gray or off-white border. Then you have a white TV stand opposite the sectional. Now, one thing that is a major note is that three of the walls are like a light sky blue. And one of the walls is a deep navy. And next to the wall that happens to be deep navy is an entryway that's wallpapered in like a trellis style, or it's actually hard to make out, geometric white wallpaper with a navy pattern. Looking around this space in terms of other furnishings, we have a white table. Well, I mean, the table itself appears to be wood, but it's got a white tablecloth with white chairs with a white cane back and sort of an ornate top. They look like they've been painted white. Uh, then we have sort of a buffet. It looks like a dresser that's being used as a buffet that has some really cool bamboo detailing with some ceramic lamps that have almost a drip dye blue stripe on them, but they're otherwise white. Then we have these beautiful gauzy drapes that open up into what looks like a sunroom that has two sky blue armchairs and a table in between. But I think we're focusing on this main room. There's also a chandelier sort of above or in front of that buffet piece uh, that's quite ornate. Looks like it's been spray painted white or maybe it came white, but it's like a bouquet of flowers with these different arms that have lights with little shades upon them. So let's talk about this space because you mentioned that your two word phrase is island fun. I'm seeing island with the color palette, the greens, the blues, sky blue, the nautical navy. I'm not seeing island per se. I think there is one picture or maybe two flanking the TV that do have a bit of an island tropical theme, but they're framed in black, which is taking away from sort of that light, airy, beachy type feel. And it's making them feel very heavy, especially flanking this big black TV. So the island thing is a bit of a stretch for me, except in the color palette and the use of white and maybe that bamboo chest. The other thing that feels like a stretch or that's, you know, just to be quite frank because you don't mind a smackdown, that for me is absence is there is no fun in this room. There's no playful patterns. There's no unexpected bright colors. I'm just not understanding exactly what you're meaning by fun because this room does not appear to be having any. Now, I think we can infuse some fun in this room with, I don't know. Okay, let, let's talk about infusing fun. We may want to get rid of this sort of dowdy tablecloth that looks wrinkled and a little bit sad. And you may want to put like some kind of inviting vase in the middle with some beautiful flowers. We may want some unexpected colors. And maybe those colors come from a big painting above the sofa. Because yes, I think that this sectional looks like it has this enormous wall behind it that has one tiny piece of art off to the side. So a big piece above the sofa is certainly called for. And because we have a mirror on the perpendicular wall opposite the windows, I wouldn't want to put a mirror on this particular wall. Now, 
even if you at home are kicking yourself and saying, Betsy, I also don't have an inspiration piece and I've already started decorating my room. It is not too late, people. There's still time. All you have to do is pick an inspiration piece that has the colors that you're already using. So we're using green, we're using sky blue, and we're using navy. That is going to be very easy to find. And maybe we find something that has punches of hot pink or coral orange. All of those go back to that sort of island palette, but bring in a touch of fun. Because right now we're stuck in a very cool palette. And I would like at least one warm tone to break that up and add that energy and liveliness and fun. So for me, a painting that needs to be 50 to 75% of the length of that arm of the sectional. So the length of the art needs to be 50 to 75% of the length of the sectional arm in order to remain proportional and be big enough above that sofa. If you're saying to yourself, Betsy, it's going to be so hard for me to find a piece of art like that. I just don't know where I'm going to look or how I'm going to afford it. One thing I might consider is that you take those two large pieces of art that look to be island photographs that are flanking either side of the TV and put them above the sectional. The length of each of those with a good gap in the middle, and by good I mean maybe five to eight inches, will hopefully get you to that ratio I was referring to of 50 to 75%. And then you're kind of dispersing some island vibes over there. Now, again, this may not be the perfect inspiration piece because it appears to be all cool colors. So you may want to create like a little vignette somewhere else that brings in some color. The one thing that I definitely want you to do outside of the two-word phrase is it's really bothering me. I'm having trouble focusing on other things. It's bothering me that your rug is partially under the TV stand. That's a huge no-no. Not only is this very large sisal rug partially under the TV stand, it's not fully under the sectional. So I would swap the placement so that instead of going vertically from the back of the sofa all the way to the TV stand, it's going horizontally, more spanning from the other arm of the sectional all the way to the doors to, or that kind of opening to the sunroom. I think that will really make the space feel larger and make the rug feel less awkward. I do love the texture of the rug being a sisal. That's perfect for that island vibe. You may want to consider bringing in some woven texture. I see that you've got woven texture with the placemats, but it's not really a big enough element to register in these pictures. I think it could be really cool to... Um, bring that in in terms of some picture frames or even an accent table. You might want to think about rope in terms of the base of a table lamp. Uh, the ceramic table lamp on the table next to the sectional is bothering me because we have these two really cool ceramic lamps on the buffet just kitty corner from it. So I would choose a different texture for the lamp here. And then the other thing that's missing in order to give me that island vibe is some glass because we want to think light, we want to think airy, we want to think spacious. And so a glass coffee table would feel more significant than this small round ottoman or poof. And I think it would help to give us that texture that we're looking for to give us sort of um, more different textures and shake things up a little bit. And lastly, you know, we've already got colorful walls and then we've got this navy quote unquote, accent wall or accident wall. And it just feels like there's so much going on. I would paint that navy wall the same light blue as the other three walls. I think it'll make this room feel more cohesive. I like the introduction of navy because it's in the wallpaper, but why don't you pull it into the living room in some fun pillows, maybe even the cushions on the dining chairs. There's lots of ways where we could kind of be more intentional with our color palette. But really what I want you to think about is what is going to make this room fun? Because right now, the answer is nothing. Uh, was, that, was that enough of a Betsy Smackdown for you, Kelly? Oh, goodness. Oh, goodness. Well, speaking of island fun, I'm about to 
head to my own private tropical paradise. I guess it's not tropical, nor is it an island. It's Cape Cod. I've never been there before. So I'll report back if it does happen to be tropical or if it does happen to be an island. But just based on my limited knowledge of geography, I know that it's neither. Uh, But I do hope I have a good time. I hope I have your two word phrase, Kelly. I hope I have some island fun. So until next week, everyone, stay cool or stay warm, depending on what you prefer. And I'll be right back with you to answer even more questions. Bye. A big thank you to Aton and the Embassy who wrote our theme song. A shout out to Catherine Heller who owns the podcast shop and is our editor extraordinaire. We also want to thank Jenny Sunnison and her team at the Savvy Podcast Agency for their help with our social, our YouTube channel, and so much more. We also want to thank Uploft, which is our parent company who supports this podcast. And lastly, we owe a huge debt of gratitude to you. Thank you so much for tuning in and for all your support.